Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by Hamix Middle School Earth Science Department. Today, we're going to focus our attention on gravity erosion. Now, gravity erosion is a very important item here that we're going to talk about, very simply because gravity is going to be the number one force behind erosion. Even though it actually is an erosional force, it's the number one force behind all erosion that takes place with water, wind, and glaciers. Now, it is quite common especially in areas that tend to get a lot of rainfall, you tend to get quite a bit of gravity erosion. That's what we call mass movement. Now, sometimes mass movement has another, another name. It's called mass wasting. And all four types that we're going to talk about are all categorized by the velocity of movement with the soil. So we're going to talk about creep, slumps, mudslides, and landslides. So creep is going to be the slowest of all movement. Very, very hard to measure because of its slow movement, but you want to take a look at the clues with the, along the hillside such as curved tree trunks. Tr uh, trees are going to be carried down slope, but trees re-correct themselves as they grow, very simply because they want to get the most direct sunlight at all times. If you look at fence posts, fence posts, if they're starting to become horizontal to the, to the hillside, then what's happening there is that they're being brought down slope. Very, very slow form of mass movement. Slumps. These can be quite sudden at times, very simply because they kind of act like a sinkhole without the carbonation. These usually occur in areas where the rock underneath the soil has become broken and for whatever reason the rock can't support the overlying weight of the soil and it slumps downward. And you can see here that this slump right here is a quite, a, quite a large one with the entire cliff face actually slumping downward. Mudslides. Mudslides are solely based on slope. You're dealing with soil that is totally saturated with water due to torrential rains. This water mixes with the soil. The soil uh, is completely locked up with moisture so it becomes impermeable. So there's nowhere for the water to go except to act as runoff. And it mixes with the soil to make mud. The bigger the mudslide, the more devastation that can actually occur. So these mudslides, this one wasn't that bad, but if you look, the mud is all the way up to the Jeep tires. You're probably looking at about two, two and a half feet worth of mud in this case. So they can really, really clog up highways and really ruin a lot of valuable possessions, including homes. This mudslide was in California. Uh, they actually had a mudslide in this area 10 years apart, one in 1995, one in 2005. This is in the La Conchita area. And you can see that cliff face just became very unstable, actually buried a large number of homes at the very base of that cliff. The next one up is what we call landslide. These are sometimes called earth slides or rock slides or even avalanches. These are massive sections of rock that break off. And the big difference between a rock, rock slide and a mudslide is that landslides or rock slides, they're not really necessarily saturated with moisture. It's re relatively dry soil. And again, these can be quite devastating as well. And you can see that there's no organization to the sediment that's being brought down slope. You see in this case, you have some soil and you have some very large boulders. And you can see this hiker as well, just probably just missed this rock slide or landslide as well. No organization whatsoever. Avalanches are thrown into that category as well. Instead of rock and soil, it's snow and ice that's falling down slope, all based upon slope of the land. Now remember guys, gravity is unsorted, it is unlayered, and it's somewhat unorganized with angled fragments. So gravity is gonna be a very, very important feature here regarding uh, erosion. So that's it for now, we'll talk to you soon.